Hi, I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. This is now renting with Forgotten Cinema, and we're talking about the movie Our Friend. And you know what? You're gonna need these. All right, Mike, before we get started, why don't you let everyone know what Our Friend is about? Well, after receiving life-altering news, a couple finds unexpected support from their best friend. He puts his own life on hold and moves into their family home, bringing an impact much greater and more profound than anyone could have imagined. So you've obviously come onto the Row 8 site because you're thinking about watching this film today. And what we like to do here is give you three reasons each why we like this movie and maybe help you decide if you should click that rent button for Our Friend. Mike, what's your number one reason why or why you liked Our Friend or why people should rent Our Friend? Well, it's kind of a cheat because it's three things, but it's the cast. It's the main cast. Uh, Jason Siegel, Dakota Johnson, and Casey Affleck are all on the top of their game. This The cast really ties everything together. The emotion, the drama, the ability to, to do this very tough film, which it is a tough film to kind of get through and watch in terms of like that it's tough subject matter. It They play very real characters, very emotional characters, and it's all very, very real and very gripping, uh, their acting. Uh, so that's my number one pick. You watch it for them. Well, and yeah, and they have to be good because if they're not good, then you're not watching this movie. You're not you're liking this movie. It, yeah. yeah, because they could easily dive into a uh, very melodramatic type of acting, which they do not. It's really yeah. good. It's it's a lot of times, and I think you, because you're you being an actor, you would agree that a lot of times it's what you don't do or what you don't say and how you you know react and how you think and how you look or how you just the the nonverbal acting is very good in this movie and also goes to you just kind of like getting involved with this movie. So that is also my, I didn't, I know I should have said my number one thing, but, <laughs> but we already had the graphic that said number one, I'm sure, but it was the, it was the actors. Let me, I'll go with, you know what? I'm going to go my number two now since I let you, I'm going to skip that. We're going to number two, then number two you. That's right. That's, that's how we do it. That will, that's so, cool. Okay. So my number two is the character development. So not just the actors, but also the writing and the directing, the development of characters when you first meet them. Granted, this is a non-linear story. So it's told from different parts. It goes back and forth, back and forth. I think honestly, that's probably the only way to do this story because there are so many elements that you want to touch, but you get to meet the characters at different points in their lives. It's just interesting to see the transition and the transformation of of the friend, of the husband, them together, them separate, their family, the the kids. It's just it's the development not only goes to just the acting that's part of it, mm -hmm. but also to the writing and to the directing, which I think is very good in this movie. Well. I'm going to have to switch my number two and three to kind of match up with you. you have to my, match. Number, my number three is the nonlinear storytelling. I really enjoy that. I think that, like you said, it's, it would be tough to do this movie without it because then you'd be telling different places in their lives in sequence, which would be awkward. But I didn't expect that. I expected it to be mostly about um, the, the cancer diagnosis and the life through that. But it really does pick up through their lives in different points in time, even before that, which I found very interesting. And the way it's, it's cut, I think, helps this movie from not being. I, I didn't go through like four boxes of tissues because it broke it up a little bit uh, by doing that. So I liked the nonlinear story. Kind of. I almost wonder if you were linear, if the movie would lack less punch, if it would be, if it was a linear, if you just did straightforward, you know how everyone talks about Memento. If you yeah. haven't seen Memento, you should. Uh, how like, oh, let's put it like, because that's told nonlinear. Let's put that linear. It's, it's like, that's a different movie. That's not yeah. the movie you want to watch. So if you do that with this movie, it might, it might bore you a little. You might, the whole family go through this whole ordeal and if we're going through that same ordeal with them linear, it would have probably affect us negatively watching the movie. The fact that it's non-linear and they go back and forth, I think that keeps us invested. It keeps us interested and it just, it just packs more of a punch. I, I agree with you totally on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So my number three is actually the fact that are you looking for a good cry? Because here it is. That's my number three. If you are just looking for a movie and we all are at some point looking for a movie where we just need to get out our feelings, where we just need to just emotionally cry, maybe by ourselves. The, uh, one late at night, I'm going to tell you right now, I watch this alone. My wife, I have no interest in it. And it's just like, you can't stop. You can't just stop tearing up. It's like, <laughs> if you're looking for that, this is the movie for you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is that your number three as well? No, my number three <laughs> is not that. My number three is actually kind of the opposite of that. Although I did cry quite a bit at the end of this film. It's the moments of, of levity that are in this film. There are some some genuinely funny moments and not like ha ha oh it's a it's a laugh out loud comedy but there are you know like in real life to get through trauma people tell jokes to each other they they try to make each other smile and laugh and some of the lines and dialogue are very good we actually quoted a couple lines uh before we, we started won't do it for this. you we promise you'll you'll hear them oh. but there are some 
there are some really good lines and moments of levity that kind of break this movie up from just being just so so sad <laughs> it's sad but it's also very uplifting there's a there's a very nice message in it it is just, there's yeah. hope and and getting over grief and stuff yeah like absolutely that, sure. absolutely so you know we hope that we helped you out in some way we hope you were looking for this type of film you know check the row eight site row eight's got plenty of movies that you can get through your rent there's a lot of deals on the site as well i know that we've taken advantage of some of that stuff i'm um, like where, where can they what, what about us mike tell them about us you know that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> uh, they can find us at ForgottenCinemaPodcast.com. We are a podcast where we talk about forgotten films that seem to be forgotten by audiences, and we kind of bring them back to life and remind you about why you should check them out. So check out Forgotten Cinema wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks for watching us. Uh, it, hopefully we helped you out. Click the link. Go to watch our friend. Enjoy the movie. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know if we helped you out in any way. And if not, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize for Butler. <laughs> I didn't need these tissues after all. Oh, he's crying now. All right. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Uh, I am Mike Field. I'm Mike Bowler. All right, enough. This is Now Renting with Forgotten Cinema, brought to you by Row 8. <sighs> Embarrassing.